thanks so much for doing this and it's great to meet you all you've um helped my husband and i you know get through the last year because we've really enjoyed your uh, slumber ground videos oh, oh that's so thank nice you. <laughs> <laughs> we're always like so excited when there's a new one there's a, yeah, there's a new... <laughs> oh that's so, awesome <laughs> So, um, yeah, first of all, if you wouldn't mind just um, going around, just briefly introducing yourself and say what it is you um, do at uh, TCM, um, maybe Millie starting with yourself. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Millie DeCherico. I'm uh, a programmer. I'm in the programming department at TCM, and I am the programmer for TCM Underground. Yeah, um, ben, do you want to? Yeah, hey, I'm Ben Cheeves, and I work with Millie in the programming department at TCM. And I'm um, Toya Happy. Hey, I'm uh, Quatoya Murray, and I am the editorial manager at TCM, and I also run our YouTube channel. Good work, yeah. <laughs> and um, Matthew. Hey, I'm Matthew Ombi. I work on all of our digital projects, so all of our websites and the film festival website and anything in that realm. Nice. Yeah, great. Um, well, for the uninitiated, um, maybe you could just give us a bit of an overview of what TCM Underground is and what people might expect when they sort of tune in late on a Friday night, early hours of Saturday morning. Um, Millie, do you remember to start with that? Sure. Um, so TCM Underground is our kind of late night cult movie franchise. Um, comes on, you know, pretty late on a Friday night. Um, Essentially, we're kind of just, um, you know, we're just a, a, a landing house for like all of the weird films that, you know, would maybe not play during normal hours on TCM. Um, we kind of see it as sort of like, once you've crossed over to us, this, this is a different experience than maybe what you're used to. And, you know, the films that we've played on there, are, you know, kind of a bit of everything, like, but they're all kind of united by the idea that they're like, maybe weird or offbeat or, um, you know, sort of like classic, maybe midnight movies sometimes, but also just sort of like, you know, bizarre kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anyone else want to um, kind of add anything to that? Yeah, I'll just throw in, yeah, it's just kind of the, the destination for cult movies on TCM, the stuff that you're more than likely not going to see in the daytime because they don't fit that realm of movies. So everything from black exploitation to B-movies to experimental to, you know, to Grease too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think, um, like, Millie does a, a great job of, like, kind of expanding what cult, what's traditionally thought of as cult. It's, like, bringing in a lot of, like, kind of newer 80s movies that maybe aren't thought of yet as cult, but are just, you know, kind of movies that are lost to the VHS era and like never made it onto DVD and things like that. So it's, I think it's a, a fun way to look at it. Yeah. Did you want to add anything, um, Matthew? To that? Yeah, I mean, I'll just say that, you know, to echo Ben's point just about, you know, Millie doing a great job of pulling in things that you really just can't see in any other format. You know, I mean, I think about there being just so many movies just over the years that I've been able to watch just because Millie's programmed them because you can't get them on video or you can't get them on DVD. So, yeah, I mean, it, it really helps that effort. I feel like, you know, something like, I'm Millie, I'm thinking about like, remember my name, like the only place you can see that is TCM, you know, so. Yeah. And that must be pretty tricky. And imagine there's some things that you haven't been able to show just because you haven't been able to track down. But th does that take quite a lot of work behind the scenes just to get a copy of the film to show sometimes? Yeah, I, I will say, because I've been doing this for like 15 years and at the it's gotten better, I think, over the years. Like when we first started, you know, we were still kind of not, I mean, we had the internet, but it was not, I don't, I think we're just kind of at the beginning of it where we're kind of doing digital archiving and that kind of stuff. And so now it feels like there's so many movies that are available that weren't available 15 years ago, which is great. Um, so I kind of say if now if it's lost, it's kind of lost for a, a pretty good reason. Um, and so in those titles, yeah, are a little bit harder. Um, you know, it's really all about rights. So if, um, you know, there's like a music issue or some kind of, you know, rights owners, um, you know, debate or whatever, then yeah, those are the movies that are typically like harder to figure out. But for the most part, it's a lot of stuff we've been able to play over the years. So it's pretty cool. And just kind of briefly, do you each have a favorite movie that's um, been shown on TTM Underground? 
over the years. Um, That's hard. I have to think. <laughs> I really like the um, the '90s, like kind of. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the director right now, but the, I was a teenage serial killer, and um, um, what's the like the Kill Rock Stars <laughs> movie? I can't remember Surgeon, the name. But those, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Those um, like those are really neat to get to see. Like you know, again, like things I had looked for for a long time, and for me, that was those are movies that really spoke to me in in high school. Of you know. That kind of like underground indie feminist movies. I think uh, for me, one of I'll just say this is just more of a personal. Um, and I've we've I've mentioned this movie on Slumberground before. But when I first started, I was you know just very starry eyed and like, oh my god, Millie, I get to work with Millie. Like I like <laughs> knew about her. She was like legendary. So I was very excited, and I was just kind of throwing out ideas of stuff that I wanted to see on Slumberground. And for me, it was I'm gonna get you, sucker. And so that was like the proudest moment of my life. Was like I think my first or second year we got to show that. So. I I was like, I made it. I'm done. I, I, I've done what I needed to do. So yeah, you programmed that night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I programmed that night. It's great. Bernie Casey. <laughs> I think for me, like, you know, and this is no secret among the, the TCM Slumberground crew, but um, I love like dolls and puppets a lot. And so <laughs> Millie programmed last year, um, you know, dolls, uh, the Stuart Gordon movie. And I just, uh, I was like, okay, Millie gets it. She knows, <laughs> knows what's up. So that was a favorite of mine. And probably even harder for you to pick uh, Millie, but you have... <laughs> Can you pick a, a, a favorite? What They're all favorite? my warped children. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, like um, uh, when we got to play the world's greatest sinner, which is this, you know, kind of crazy rock and roll movie from the 60s that was made by Timothy Carey. It was kind of this like, you know, crazy cult movie actor and he did it himself and it was, you know, kind of, that was actually an underground movie for a very long time. It was hard to find and then, you know, we were able to work out um, the rights with his son. And um, that was a big get for me personally. And I, and I love that movie too, so. I will say that that movie, uh, I think that was probably one of the first titles that put Underground on my radar. Like I had been watching TCM for a long time, but when there was like little promotions for that one and I was just like, what is this movie? That looks mm -hmm. incredible. And ended up watching it. And I thought that was the coolest movie I'd ever seen. So that like definitely put Underground on my radar. And one that is um, going to be shown very soon, and we can't actually, oh, we can just about see it because I've got my green screen on. <laughs> this is my original VHS copy, and this is actually the, uh. the Grease 2 <laughs> is the first um, movie that I bought on VHS. So I saved up my uh, pocket wow. money, um, my £12 or something, choice. I think it was, <laughs> because I'd, I'd already been hiring it out from the video store kind of every week my, my dad was always encouraging me like don't you want to get this <laughs> sort of more macho movie and I'll be no I want to get Grease 2 and it was partly to impress my <laughs> older sisters but also I, I just uh, loved it and um, I realized watching it again recently that I think I've seen it so many times that it's kind of impossible for me to watch it objectively in some ways I just sort of know it too well but I um, have the same issue <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so um yeah you know, why have you programmed um, Grease 2 and it's part of the, the TCM um, festival as well and sort of what makes it a TCM underground movie? I mean, for I'll just start. I mean, quite honestly, it's like, it's a, like a, the definition of a cult movie. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, studio flop, if you will. And uh, it was rediscovered by people and they love it. Obviously, you guys are very passionate about it. Um, and to me, that's kind of, you know, that is a cult movie, in my opinion. And, you know, I think we play Grease, the first one, a lot on the network. And we've actually never played Grease 2. And so I think that was just sort of a fun way to, like, you know, kind of pick something for, um, you know, for the film festival that, you know, we thought might be a good tie-in for the film festival. And it would be something that we could all talk about for Slumberground. And it's going to be on uh, earlier as well, isn't it? It'll be broadcast earlier than your usual. You wouldn't just say sort of what time it's going to be on in terms of the evening of programming. Yeah, it's. I think it's on at 11 p.m. 
uh, which is <laughs> it's a little early for us because we don't really come on a couple hours later. So um, they'll be interesting to see, you know, who tunes in. So yeah. I think it's technically ten forty-five is when it'll when it'll come oh, on. I think uh, I could be wrong. I will, I will double check. Oh, well, yeah, in the it's eleven. Eleven on the schedule. Okay, is it eleven? Okay, cool. We'll we'll write the time in the description below this video. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, does anyone else want to chip in on why you think it, you know, makes a good uh, TCM underground movie? Yeah, I'll good. mirror basically what Millie's saying, um, and I know Ben's got a lot to say about this movie too, and of course, you know, tune in, we we all talk about it, it'll be a whole Slumberground episode. This was actually my first time seeing it, um, but it definitely is a cult movie because I've known about it, I feel like, half my life because all of my good friends who, you know, they're movie buffs, we all have different tastes, but they're, I trust their opinions. And they, for years, have just been saying like, oh, no, 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 you gotta watch Grease 2. Like, you've never seen Grease 2? Grease 2 is the one. And I just like, wait, there's a sequel? Like, what? I never knew there was a sequel, why? So it was just one of those movies my whole, like half my life I kind of knew about. I just never watched it up until now. And so, yeah, it was definitely an interesting experience. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to re-watch it and to kind of hear what other people think about it after we uh, air it. Yeah, and what are other people's relationships to the movie, like the, maybe the first time you saw it, initial reaction, or what you've thought of it over the years? I think mine was not even seeing the movie, it was just hearing people sing that reproduction song, like, non-stop in school. Like, I didn't even know what it was from. People would just sing it, and I would be like, what is that, what is that song you're singing? And it was from Grease too. and I found that out many years later, and I, you know, never watched it until, you know, recently. And it's just funny to know that that song just, like, you know, struck a chord with middle schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes, yeah, so you're uh, both recent to the film, but but then you you watched it. Um, yeah, I think I, I maybe had a similar experience with you, where I watched it a lot as a kid, and like had it taped off the TV, and it was on like cable all the time, and so I probably saw it 200 times growing up, and I know it by heart, and like I I know it better than Greece because I, it wasn't on TV as much and I just didn't like it. I like this movie more. So this is this is kind of my entire Grease world is Grease 2. <laughs> but yeah, me and my sister would watch it. I know all the songs. We had routines to it. Like, <laughs> it, yeah. It's I'm just ready for great. Ben to, to show me the dance moves <laughs> that he knows from this movie. <laughs> and it's surprisingly like adult. And I was um, reading one of the reviews from it at the time that sort of mentioned that like, um, it's a little bit more explicitly adult than the original, I think. But I mean, ever, as watching it as a child, that all of that went over my head completely. Oh, yeah. so I didn't really know what they were talking. Even in reproduction, I don't think I quite knew what they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, Millie, was it a film that you've watched um, more recently for the first time, or if, did you see it a long time ago? No, oh, yeah, I was definitely. I saw it on VHS many times at you know my friend's house and. Um, but it had been a while since I've seen it. And when, when I rewatched it recently, I sort of loved it again, but in a different way, like as an older person. Um, because I think as a kid, I watched it and I just liked to, to see the dancing and the, and the music. I was, you know, singing along to like, let's do it for our country, which I did not understand. <laughs> <laughs> I did not understand the nuance of that song. Um, but then, yeah, when I watched it recently, I was like, oh yeah, this movie is super fun. I think it, it I think I like it that it's, I like that it's different than the first Grease, uh, or it seems to be in like kind of a different headspace. So um, yeah, but I remember watching it a lot too, growing up. And that's funny that, with, like, um, oh yeah, go, go on, <laughs> go on Ben. <laughs> I think that like the, the songwriters took Grease Lightning and just like ran with that. They're like, let's make every single song about sex in this one. Like, like I, I think maybe charades is not about sex, but otherwise they're all about doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it is funny, let, let's do it for our country. Cause as I was watching that again, sort of recently I was thinking, oh, so as a child, I was like the Maureen Chiefy character that doesn't understand what he's talking about, that he's talking about <laughs> sex. <laughs> um, <laughs> And yeah, I don't know if you want to say anything about the cast because uh, you have Maureen uh, Tiffy, who is in Fame and Supergirl, and then she is in some other things, but I think those are like her big movies. And Supergirl is another sort of kind of guilty pleasure, not that guilty, but <laughs> <laughs> mine. Um, do, do you have a kind of favorite performance or anything you want to say about the cast? 
I love uh, Lorna Loff. I think she's like so great in it. <laughs> like she like, whenever she has a line in a song, she gives it like 110%. She comes out and like score tonight when she's like, <laughs> she just comes out like <laughs> singing to Johnny. And it's like, so you can see her her Broadway background and like she, where she got her set of lungs from Judy Garland because she just comes out belting those, those lines. And she's, she's great in that. Yeah, Ben knows like all the background dancers and everybody as well. <laughs> the entire cast. He can identify every person. <laughs> the the Double Mint twins. They had their own sitcom called Double oh, Trouble. Did they? <laughs> yeah, I was obsessed with it <laughs> as a kid. Um, and Tab Hunter. This is gonna be me going all my obsession. <laughs> Tab Hunt, Tab Hunter, who was sort of a fifties um, heartthrob, yeah. fifties sixties heartthrob, but had probably been forgotten by most people. By the time he was I think cast, he had, I guess. had just done um, polyester um, he, with John he, he Waters that and that kind of yeah I think like is that 80 or 81 I can't remember when polyester came out but it was like right around the same time so like he kind of got back on the like kind of his camp revival in the 80s it's definitely a pleasure to see him in that movie too. Yeah. Still, still looks fantastic yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and Connie Stevens is in it and then she did back to the beach um like with the Annette and uh, Frankie, like a few years later. And Michelle Pfeiffer, of course, he's sort of um, yes. over my shoulder. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I've done a lot of interviews with actors and filmmakers over the years. And the first time I interviewed Michelle Pfeiffer, I didn't mention it during the interview, but after the interview, I kind of said, Grease 2, and almost, you know, did my moment. I didn't have it, <laughs> I didn't have it with me. Um, and she was very polite, but, you know, she just sort of smiled and didn't really say very much. And then I realized <laughs> that um, the film wasn't, listed in her credits and in the production notes for the film um it mentioned everything else that she did <laughs> not agree wow. to oh maybe wow. she doesn't <laughs> like talking about this one. and this was i think probably about 10 years ago whereas now i think she seems much more up for talking about it and i think, I think she's, she's been, come around yeah, yeah. yeah. well that, yeah that's interesting i always think about that kind of stuff too because I, I think about like susan sarandon and and her roles and how she didn't want to talk about certain roles for a while. I, yeah, I can understand it, but I honestly, I, I'm glad that, that Michelle Pfeiffer came around because honestly, like her character is awesome. Like she, that, her, yeah. Stephanie is my favorite character of the movie, obviously, but mm. um, you know, sort of like her, her kind of, uh, I don't know, like tomboyish energy, like the, the idea that she's kind of doing the thing where she's like, uh, doesn't want to affiliate with this group or she feels like, you know, there's all these like rigid rules for who she can date and what she can do. And, you know, I love that. And I love that she wears pants and doesn't want to wear skirts. And she's, you know, eating giant hamburgers in front of, you know, like <laughs> hot guys. She just like, doesn't care, you know, it's great. With extra ketchup or whatever. Extra line ketchup. <laughs> Double ketchup, I think it's. <laughs> um, yeah, because some people have seen it as being like, you know, feminist, I guess, compared to the first one. The fact that, yeah, she doesn't, changed does she um what, what do we think of it as a sequel so i guess the main thing is the sort of gender <laughs> reversal and then it's sort of one of those sequels that's kind of repeating the, the first film to some degree i have my opinion yeah. but i i think as a <laughs> as a sequel it's something um i i think it's i like what it does because it is so wild and it is its own thing but i do think i do want to just throw this out because i think that is such a, a common thread that people have that this one's more feminine feminist than the first one and my argument with the first one is that like you know sandy didn't do it just for 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 Danny like I feel like she wanted to be you know an, an edgy person and then also Danny changes for her so it's like a nice like it feels balanced at least in my opinion but again I am a I really love the first one uh compared like, I like the second well I'm not gonna <laughs> I, I, I had fun with the second one. It was, it had moments, but I think uh, I've appreciated it more since talking with them about it. I mean, we've been talking about Grease too. I mean, we've been preparing for this episode for a while. So there's been a lot of conversation. And of course, hearing other people who appreciate it and love it so more uh, so much, it brings a lot to it that makes me like, okay, well now I want to rewatch this again with these people. And I want to have fun with this the way that they all enjoy it. So so yeah, that's kind of my my thinking on it. I so wonder too if you know 
the movie would have been a lot more successful if it hadn't been tied to Grease One. Like if it had just been kind of its own thing, I wonder if people would have been like more receptive to it. Like if they didn't feel like they had to stay in that sort of, you know, late fifties, early sixties mode. Like if, if they'd gone a different direction and not brought back, you know, the few cast members that wanted to return for it. It makes me wonder if, you know, it would have had a different reaction, I guess, from people. So I'm curious about that. Yeah, the I mean, the first one was such a hit that it, it, it almost might have been best left. I don't know. But I think at one point there was supposed to be four sequels. <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, or three, three I think sequels. Three, yeah. I think it was three sequels. That, would have been yeah, four I think movies. They thought a trilogy. And I think after the first one, they kind of didn't want to do a second one. But then, like a few months later, they were like, oh, no, this is a big deal. Now we want to do a second one. But by that point, just so much had changed of just where other people's careers had gone and then a few of the composers passed and just stuff like that. So it just, unfortunately the timing just wasn't right for Grease 2 to be successful at the time. But then I think it, in a perfect cult fashion, the timing was just right because it became what it became. And then of course, you know, with that time, it's, you know, now what it is now. I mean, it's, it's just completely blown up. And it's, I think with years, it's just gonna continue to get bigger. Yeah, so next year will actually be the 40th anniversary, I guess, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wonder what I think that was in high school. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I think that <laughs> High School Musical is was one of the sequels, just reworked as a different movie. That's true, yeah. And I think there should be like Grease Six, like in space. I would watch them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, people will be able to hear um, you talk more about um, Grease Two before the movie airs on um, TCM, won't they? Yeah, yes. we'll, we'll be yeah. introducing it and we'll have an outro and we'll have a slumber ground episode. Wonderful. So yeah, we'll yeah. we'll leave you um, some, some things to say in that. Um, but I, I would just like to ask each of you if you have um, a favorite LGBTQ plus film and, and why. And who wants to take that first? Sorry, your audio cut out, I couldn't hear. Oh, yeah, just, just to, as a final question, if you each have a favorite um, movie that you might define as LGBTQ+, plus or, you know, a queer movie, however you want to define it. Yeah. Um, I'll go first. I, uh, I think that uh, always my go-to is Scorpio Rising by uh, Kenneth Anger. I mean, it's a sh short film, uh, like underground film, but I think that just, for me, when I saw that, like, in my, like, late teens, early twenties, I was like, oh, this, this is gay culture. Okay, get it. This is what it's all based on. <laughs> I think uh, my favorite uh, newer one is The Handmaiden. Um, came out a couple years ago, uh, Park Chan-woo, I believe that's the same. I'm probably doing that terribly. Um, but I think it's just such a fun kind of, you know, it's this foreign film that's a film noir-esque kind of throwback to that era, but then it's its own thing. And then there's this beautiful lesbian story that's the center of it. And I think it's one of the few films that has done um, just kind of a lesbian romance without feeling exploitative and gross. Like once I leave it, I'm just like, ew, that was through a male gaze. Like it doesn't feel that way. So yeah, that was something that like really impressed me when I saw it. It's like stayed in my head for a while. Yeah, beautiful film, yeah. Uh, Matthew, did you want to get it? Yeah, um, so one that really sticks out in my mind is Female Trouble, John Waters' movie. Um, it, I think because it sort of hit me at a certain time in my life, you know, I'd just gotten to college when I saw it, I wasn't out, and it was like just this experience of watching it in this class with other people and just kind of seeing it. I, I think a lot of the LGBT films that I'd seen up until that point hadn't really depicted anything other than sort of like the struggle of being gay. And this was just sort of like celebrating it and saying, oh, you don't have to be a certain way. You can be weird. You know, you can, you know, I think the Edith Massey line is in that is that <laughs> like the world of heterosexual is a sick and boring existing existence or something like that. And I just thought that was so great. And it was just like, I hadn't heard that message before, you know? And so I think that movie really kind of sticks out in my mind as just like a really formative one for me. So. Yeah, John Waters' like whole entire world was just is a very queer, friendly uh, experience. Yeah. And Millie, how about yourself? Well, I'm gonna be very obvious. I, I think mine is Paris is Burning. Um, it yeah. <laughs> it seems to be the reference point for everything. 
you know, at, at this point. And it's, it's so full of life. And I, when I watched mm-hmm. it for the first time in high school, I think I was, couldn't believe it. Like it's, it was, I thought it was true. Like, it, like almost like outsider art, you know, that was happening at the time. And I, I think it's awesome. So cool. Yeah, me too. And it still holds up um, so well now, doesn't it? And yeah. like you say, still feels like it's influencing um, culture. Thanks very much um, to all of you. Look forward to tuning in um, to, to see what you'll have to say about Greece too. And just watching it on TV, I think that's always an exciting thing. But see something live, you know, we can always we have access to these things now, but when it's actually being broadcast, it uh, gives, it, gives you that extra thrill, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Join us on the Twitter for it. Uh, ben will be live tweeting uh, along with one of our fellow co-workers, Himrani uh, Vias. And yeah, we'll be live tweeting Greece too. So tweet with us. Yeah. And there's a TCM Underground um, Twitter. What, what's that? Yeah, at TCM Underground on Twitter. And then, of course, you can always follow at TCM and then our YouTube channel. Just subscribe to the TCM YouTube channel. And Slumberground is all in there in a playlist. Well, guys, thanks very much. And, yep, catch you again soon, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.